We'll go to the New York Giants. And how about Darius Slayton? This is a playmaker that really emerged, really has a connection with Daniel Jones that you have to like. If I'm the New York Giants, I'm excited about what he's been able to the display, the speed, the playmaking, the athleticism, and really the ability to win those 50-50 balls on the perimeter, he should be a big-time contributor for the New York Giants going forward. Yeah, Daniel Jones could be his number one receiver for a very long time. That was a great connection. We'll get to his quarterback a little bit later on in the list. Uh, number 24, let's go to the Buffalo Bills and Devin Singletary out of Florida Atlantic, who I actually said was kind of like a little mini Shady McCoy. He ends up actually taking Shady McCoy's job and was a nice compliment there to Frank Gore before eventually later in the season really taking over that primary role. We even saw what he did in the playoffs, uh, Buck. This is a fantastic young football player. Look, fantastic young football player. Look, Bills Mafia, I think they have one. They got another RB1. Let's go to 23, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers have been one of the best clubs at identifying wide receivers outside the first round. Looks like they found another one. And Deontay Johnson had an opportunity to step on the field, and he certainly didn't disappoint. Big-time playmaker. I like his ability to take the top off the defense. Has shown big playability. Pittsburgh Steelers have a nice one. He should be a nice compliment to what they have in their wide receiver court going forward. Yeah, they know how to scout wide receivers there in Pittsburgh. All right, let's get to number 22 on the list, a man who I refer to as the Grim Reacher, and I meant that as a pure compliment because of what Garrett Bradbury does with his athleticism, his ability to reach block with that athleticism, also get out in the second level in the screen game, in the run game. He was outstanding for a Minnesota Vikings run offense led by Dalvin Cook. You know, you talk about run offenses. The Baltimore Ravens got all of the headlines because of their dynamic running offense. Lamar Jackson made all the plays. But then when you found them in the passing game, Hollywood Brown was the key to their success. Stretch playmaker, guy who has speed to burn. We saw him repeatedly get over the top of the defense. And with Lamar Jackson running as he's running, a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, Hollywood Brown showed that he could exploit that coverage could be problems for teams facing Baltimore over the next few years. Yeah, I talk about a perfect fit scheme-wise. Hollywood Brown, great fit there with the Baltimore Ravens. All right, let's go to the Washington Redskins with the 20th player on our list. That's Cole Holcomb, who is just a tackling machine for this Redskins defense. Relies on instincts, Buck, an outstanding, instinctive player who really blossomed this year for the Washington Redskins. Going to be a big part of their defense. Well, they're, look, in this upcoming draft, they're going to have a big-time player up front, and Cole Holcomb's going to benefit playing behind him. Yeah, the Cole Holcomb has been a tackling machine. You're right, he came right in, filled right in, made a ton of plays, and everyone is looking for a playmaker on the inside of their defense. That's why I'm going to the Buffalo Bills next. At 19, Ed Oliver. We loved him during the pre-draft process in terms of what he could be as an inside pass rusher. Certainly lived up to billing. We like the energy. We like the relentlessness. I like the technique, and I thought he was a guy that got better and better as the season went along. This defense was one of the best defenses in football, partially because Ed Oliver was an instant impact player on the inside. Well, if you're going to block guys like Ed Oliver, you better have some good interior linemen, and that's what Elton Jenkins was for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, he comes in at number 18 on the list. Buck, just a people mover in the run game. He's very aware. That's what stood out to me, just his instincts and awareness and pass protection, uh, picking up and passing off twists. you got to protect number 12. He did a great job of that and also what he did in the run game, a complete player, uh, a real steal of a draft pick here for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, he has been a steal uh, for the Green Bay Packers. I think another steal uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles, that would be Miles Sanders. We have him 17 on the list. He became their most explosive offensive weapon. I know they have Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, but look, at the end of the year when all of their guys were out, Miles Sanders basically carried this offense. His ability not only to run the ball inside and outside, but to catch it on the perimeter, to deliver these explosive plays, gave the Philadelphia Eagles life down the stretch. He is one of the reasons why they were able to make it into the playoffs. Yeah, they needed to add some juice to that offense. He provided it. Now let's go uh, next one on the list, number 16, Kansas City Chiefs. 
Safety Juan Thornhill unfortunately suffered an injury late in the year, Buck. But, man, you co the combination of him with Tyron Matthew I thought was the key to turning around this defense under Steve Spagnolo. The instincts, the range from the back end, outstanding. I was even more impressed with what he did as a tackler, just a reliable tackler and support, a really solid player for the Kansas City Chiefs. Very solid player. And a lot of times when you're picking, you just want to get guys that really can just come in and be solid starters. A solid starter for the Washington Redskins, Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat being a dynamic edge player. We like the length. We like the athleticism. He's kind of like an energizer bunny along the front line, relentless in his pursuit of running backs and the quarterback. He's another franchise player that Ron Rivera should be able to build his defense around. You want an energizer bunny. bunny. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Gardner Minshew, you talk about energy. Uh, I compared him. I see he's kind of a poor man's Baker Mayfield going through the draft process. Actually played better football this year than Baker Mayfield. Made a, made a strong case to be the starter going forward for the Jacksonville Jaguars, even after they played uh, paid uh, Nick Foles. You see the numbers right there. Outstanding rookie campaign for the young man out of Washington State. You know, you talk about outstanding rookie campaigns. It doesn't get much better than scary Terry McLaurin for the Washington Redskins. I mean, we knew that he had speed to burn. We thought he would be a guy that would contribute in special teams. But he showed us he is a dynamic playmaker with the ball in his hands on offense. You talk about the passing yards, the receiving yards, the ability to really put the ball in the paint. There you see it almost had a 1,000-yard season, seven touchdowns. You just don't see that kind of playmaking for a guy drafted outside of the first round. Well, another wide receiver with nearly 1,000 yards, D.K. Metcalf. He's next on the list at number 12. Buck, I'm still scratching my head of how in the world this guy fell as far as he did in the draft. I, I understand, okay, maybe you punish him. Maybe he doesn't go in the top 20. Maybe you justify not taking him in the first round. But to be the, the 64th pick in the draft, are you kidding me? Uh, D.K. Metcalf, vertical stretch receiver, a big play waiting to happen. Uh, the yards per catch were outstanding. A perfect, perfect fit for Russell Wilson. Yeah, perfect fit for Russell Wilson as a guy that could take the top off the defense. He has shown that big-time playmaking ability. One of the guys that really stands out to me as a big-time playmaker on defense is Devin White from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sideline-to-sideline playmaker, outstanding instincts and awareness, uh, being able to run down ball carries, going from numbers to numbers. He displayed that ability. I like the instincts, the awareness, natural leader. Ty Bowles has a future star in Devin White. Well, let's go from one Devin to another. These guys were right together through the entire draft process in the evaluation. Devin Bush. Fill the need for the Pittsburgh Steelers. After Ryan Shazier's unfortunate injury, they just haven't had that speed and athleticism at the second level. He showed you what he could do with his range sideline to sideline, his ability to cover, and also what he can provide as a blitzer. A, a definite difference maker for the Pittsburgh Steelers was the young rookie out of, out of Michigan, Devin Bush. Yeah, another difference maker down in Carolina, Brian Burns. Brian Burns being uh, Spider-Man, being able to come off the edge. We saw the first step quickness, the burst, <laughs> being able to close and get quarterbacks to the ground. We saw it, one of the best young edge rushers that we found. And as he continues to grow and mature and add a, a couple more tools to the tool belt, He's going to be a, pro a person that's going to be a problem in the NFC South. Well, Buck, we get to number eight on the list. I remember going down to the Senior Bowl in Mobile and seeing Debo Samuel just torch everybody. And we've seen him do the same thing at the NFL level. He wasn't asked to run a variety of routes there in college at South Carolina, but, man, has he taken to it under Mike Shanahan in this San Francisco 49ers offense. He's not a gadget guy. This is a pure receiver, has a chance to be a number one receiver. He's number eight on the list. He definitely has a chance to be a number one receiver. Natural hands, uh, one of the more natural players at his position. I think this guy's natural, Daniel Jones. There was a lot of conversation about Daniel Jones being overdrafted when the New York Giants took him six overall, but I think he lived up to billing. Uh, outstanding young player with a lot of potential and promise. We saw him kind of handle the situations the way that you want to see a young quarterback handle it. I like the accuracy. I like the athleticism. I like the versatility. When he has an opportunity to continue to grow in this role, I think you're going to see and realize he is a franchise player at the position. No doubt he was, uh, he was outstanding. Just clean up the fumble issues, and you've got yourself a big-time quarterback. All right, number six on the list, I believe the best value pick in the entire draft made by our buddy Mike Mayock, and that was Max 
Crosby, who you look at the numbers there, double-digit sacks, Buck, um, uses that length. He's got a good get-off. He plays hard. He never stops. And those numbers would have been even better. He had several sacks called back due to penalties. Um, he's got a chance to be a perennial Pro Bowl player. Yeah, he, he has an opportunity to be a perennial Pro Bowl player. But guess who's going to join him on those Pro Bowl teams? Josh Allen from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right out the gate, he showed you the speed, the quickness, the athleticism, and really I like the bend and burst that he displayed as a pass rusher. Double-digit sacks, being able to be an instant impact player. He delivered. David Caldwell knocked it out of the park by picking Josh Allen. Yeah, it was a gift for him to fall into their lap, and he did not let him slide any further. Nicely done uh, by Dave Caldwell. Let's get to number four on the list, the number one overall pick in the draft. Kyler Murray, who just got better and better as the year went along, Buck. This is an offense that was inept uh, the year before. He comes in under Cliff Kingsbury. Didn't run as much as maybe a lot of people thought he might. He just carved people up from the pocket and showed he can make every throw there is. Extremely talented, Buck, and I thought got more comfortable as the season rolled along. If you're a Cardinal fan, you got to be excited about what the future holds. Yeah, you certainly should be excited about Kyler Murray. He looks like he's one of the more promising young quarterbacks. Uh, they just need to continue to put pieces around him, and he can be a star. Thinking about being a star, A.J. Brown from the Tennessee Titans. I don't know if any of us expected him to kind of dominate the league the way that he was able to dominate it as a rookie. But, man, the, the numbers speak for themselves. Thousand-year season guy that is the number one playmaker for this offense on the outside. When you mix the combination of the running game with Derrick Henry with one-on-one -on -one pass opportunities to A.J. Brown, you saw the explosiveness from the Tennessee Titans offense. A.J. Brown is going to be a number one receiver that we talk about for a long time in Tennessee. Yeah, A.J. Brown, look, he can make a case to be number one on this list. We have him at number three. Uh, number two on the list and the highest rated offensive player uh, is Josh Jacobs. Look, he missed some time there at the very end of the year due to injuries, but he carried this Oakland Raiders offense on his back, Buck. Uh, you see the numbers there, 1,150 yards, nearly five yards carry. Um, yards after contact was outstanding. You're going to see him get more and more involved in the passing game as his career develops. A guy we both love through the draft process, he delivered as a rookie. He certainly delivered. I think the guy that's at the top of the list, and I know you're going to talk about him as well, but Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa was as good as advertised. Uh, we talked about him understanding the family business when it comes to rushing the passer. Hand skills, check. Athleticism, check. Motor, check. Finishing skills, check. He has everything that you want um, as a red rusher because he has it all. He really, really helped this San Francisco 49ers defense dominate for most of the season. He is going to be a guy that has an opportunity to be a perennial player off the edge. Look, he put up big numbers when you look at the nine sacks, but, Buck, the numbers do not tell the story. When you watch the tape of Nick Bosa, how much attention uh, he was given by opponents, which freed up teammates to make plays, how many pressures he was able to generate, uh, being strong and stout at the point of attack in the run game, he was a major difference maker. I thought he was the best player coming into the draft, and I thought he delivered the best rookie season. That's why he ends up number one on the list. Now, for more Move the Sticks videos, go to youtube.com slash NFL podcast. You can also, also check us out, nfl.com slash MTS video. There you have it, top rookies of 2019.